Yo guys, what's up? This is Sugikan. Thanks for joining me today on my Prime World review. And Prime World is a very obscure MOBA when it comes to the idea and concept of the game. So you have the MOBA side of the game, then you have the aspects like castle building and pretty much like PvE, kind of like an RPG thing. Like you could just like an instance or a raid or a dungeon, whatever you want to call it. And Prime World, let's talk about the concept of the game. So you are able to choose in the beginning from two different factions, the Imperium and the Keepers. You know, and the Keepers are like, kind of like the hippies. They're all about nature and like stuff, stuff like that. And Imperium is very like industrial machines and everything like that. There's not a lot of like big differences between choosing the two. The most biggest one will be that you will be using um, because each of the class classes and characters will be available on the both sides, but each has a counterpart, which are, they're like uniquely the same. They just look different. The keeper version of a certain character is different than on the Imperium side. So you're able to actually like buy the both sides of the skins depending on which faction you play for. Of course, you have a, like a clan and guild system in the game, which is like, you know, bound to a certain like side. And um, the other side of the things is, of course, that you are able to build a castle. And what you're able to do in the castle, you're able to do like mills, like houses, and these will like generate to you resources. Silver, which is kind of like the in-game currency, and then you have the gold, which is the paid currency in the game. With silver, you can unlock heroes, but you can unlock heroes with the gold too. A very similar model to other ones. There are certain ways to get gold in the game, but it will take longer time periods to rather than buy it. The prices of the heroes in the game are kind of high compared to a lot of the competition, and this applies to the skins too. There doesn't seem to be a, like a very smart way to scale off the prices, like the like older heroes cost like 50 gold and new ones like 500 so there's a bit of like a skepticism when it comes to the actual pricing in prime world and let's talk about the the dungeon stuff so you're able to go to these like pve missions and you have like certain challenges you have a group of five people and you defend the turrets we well, can defend a base and um you know and then there's like waves and coming like this is kind of like a tower def no it's not a td it's a hero defense that's a really like a, a genre that was in really big in warcraft 3. i would wish there would be other moba games that would like prioritize making some pve stuff with like pl playing with group in a dungeon or like a hero defense style and it's actually pretty fun also you have an option to play a 4v4 mode where you're pretty much like a race against the other team to the middle of the map to fight against the dragon and this is like a pve plus pvp so it's kind of like a base race of some sort and this is a really cool mode of course the queue times are a bit higher on that and then you have the normal 5v5 map and as as what comes to the maps you did have a they did have like a 2v2 and like no it was actually 3v3 like rm style of map that was really like lasted only 10 minutes or something i guess they like removed it because the queue times were too high when you create multiple game modes in moba there's like a chance if you have a small player base there's going to be like a very awful queue times for those certain like um um like game modes which are not popular as the main game mode and as for the, like the normal 5v5, it's like the same diagonal map. You have chores, you have 5v5, and the only like really different side of things in this game is like the cap the flag system. So you're able to capture these flags. The flags have certain impact. Like some heroes might get benefits over buying on their own ground, vice versa. And the other interesting part of it is, of course, that you are able to teleport around the map. You have teleport scrolls, and you have a like a like a one own teleport, which you're able to teleport. It's a high cooldown, but scrolls have a, like a less of a cooldown. And you're only able to use these teleports on your own ground. So there's a flag system is really important when it comes to like map control. And it's a really unique idea, I guess, but it doesn't make like the other other sides of the map look like any different. Also, you have this weird-ass minigame in the game. In the game, in the game. 
So it kind of like gives you scrolls or something, but I think people are just playing it for the trolls because you kind of lose the game if one player is like playing the game. You can see it on the footage uh, somewhere on this video. I haven't like precisely like, yeah, well, whatever. When it comes to like options and graphics, um, the graphics are pretty decent. Some of the fonts could be better and more clear. Um, there's not a lot of options to like customize the actual like performance of the game. You have low, medium, and high quality. So I guess that applies for the textures for the most part. But you have no anti-aliasing or anything type of like other settings. And I guess I want to also talk about one of the unique sides of the game, which is its biggest strength and biggest downfall. So in this game, each of the characters have like three to four abilities and one passive. These will vary each character. Some some heroes just have more. But you have this like talent system where you're able to like put a talents into your heroes and they will like give you passive bonuses or they give you active abilities. So you might even have up to like 10 active abilities with certain like setups. The interesting part of it is that you get to you can like get the talents from like making them at your castle or after the games and there's like many ways to do and quests will like also give you um, these like talismans and shit. But the thing is, that's the biggest problem in the game because your heroes, like a rating system, will increase by what higher items you have. And because you have lower amount of players playing Prime World as of right now, the queues are not balanced. Somebody may have like really, really overpowered items compared to you, and they will do better because they have like a better rating because of that. And just like the queue system, because there's not a lot of players, the ELOs are kind of there and there. You just kind of end up like sometimes like against pros and people from high elo depending on which time you queue in. Of course I can like access to the steam numbers of the game. I am not like 100% sure how many people are playing from it. Because there's of course the standalone client and there's the Russian client and most of the players are from Russia because the game has been made in Russia. But really wrapping things up like... The talent system is really cool, but it put a lot of imbalances between the players and games. Also, it kind of like restricts the esports aspect of things because you have to collect the items and talents for each of the characters, and just like 50 characters. And you have to level all the characters in the game to get like those base stats up. And that's kind of like just a lot of grinding in the game. And that's a really a bad side. I think the talent system, if they could have removed it. Some of the characters would have been more interesting on their kits, maybe more focus on that. Most of the characters are very generic, they have like very normal spells, they don't like introduce any very higher characters like Orianna, Lee Sin, Invoker, and all these great designs that have been made in previous MOBAs. It's just kind of pale on that front of things. But wrapping things up, as I, as I like this review, Prime World is one of those games that I actually spent before it was in Steam. Um, reasonable amount of time. It was just that the game really didn't took off and I decided to pretty much stop playing it. But it's still like my top 5 most played MOBAs. I think it was really cool. The, just the queue system is really bad because I feel like every match is like very badly balanced. I feel that um, the game graphics could be a bit better. It could be more unique. But hey, it's still like a decent game, but you have to sink a lot of hours in it because of the classical system and everything like that. It's certainly different, it has certain like great art styles, and you know, it is a okay MOBA. It is a, like, I give it like a half of the score, I give it like a, you know, it's a middle of the pack. Maybe a bit of a bit of middle of the pack, I just wish it could have like done differently on the talent side and maybe the game would have been more successful. But wrapping things up, you know, Thanks for watching, please enjoy my other videos and consider subscribing and comment if you have questions about the game. You can download the game from Steam now and see you guys later on the next video. Cheers!